today we're joined by Dave Springall. We're on a big windswept gravel pit that's gin clear and Dave's going to show us a rig that uses ESP Synchro XT that's specially designed for fishing clear waters. So tell us a little bit about how you came up with the rig, Dave. Well basically mate, as ever I'm always fishing very busy, very pressured lakes. Yeah. Um, always looking for something a bit different to give me a bit of an edge and the particular lake I started on last autumn had a, a, a big shallow area down, of, down the far end of the lake um, which was literally just waist deep, yeah. um, very 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 barren, end tackle was standing out a mile uh, but the fish were spending a huge amount of, of time yeah. in that area of the lake and I just wanted something that was a going to disappear as, as you know as, as much as possible. Yeah. I was watching them standing in the in the reeds with waders on in the edge, watching them move up and down, and watched them ignore the rig like more than more than one occasion. It was blatantly obvious they were seeing it. Yeah, uh, that was the first reason. The other reason was I really wanted a bait that I could, uh, a rig that I could use with with a small bait, very small bait. So the fish I'm, I'm fishing for at the minute is sort of really well known for picking up small baits. Okay. And I wanted something I could use like a, a 10 mil bait with um, that, that would still you know work well. So why did you decide to use Synchro as the hook link, Dave? It's for a number of reasons, mate. Really, I mean, obviously you, you sent me. A fair bit of this when it when it first came out, and I've been using it for a long time, and it just sort of dawned on me that most of the properties that make it like a, a superb mainline yeah. are, are pretty much identical to the properties that you want in a hook link. Mm -hmm. um, if you see it laying on the lake bed, I mean it looks as good, if not better, than fluorocarbon. When you right. you can't see it on the lake yeah, bed at yeah. all, so it, it disappears, which again sort of what you want out of a mainline especially on pressured lakes, it's uh, it's got optimum amount of stretch in it. It's not, um, you know, it, it hits them and hooks so it acts them. So it acts as a bit of a shock absorber yeah. as well at the business end. Yeah, yeah. The, the knot strength's superb, you know, even with knotless mm. knots and basic knots, it's very, very good. Um, the other thing I like about it, because it, it disappears so well, where most people, if you see them, you know, the odd person that I had seen using mono hook links, they were very much uh, people using 10 pound hook links because they're mm. obviously trying to find their end tackle yeah. down. This stuff disappears so well in the water that I use 18 pound all the yeah. time, uh, which I think breaks at it's about 25, 25 pounds. Pound. Yeah. So it's, 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 you know, it's nigh on as strong as using a, a, a braided hook link. Yeah. Um, but, but you just can't see it. Um, it's, it's got it's got that perfect balance between sort of stiff and supple. Right. So you can fish it long. You know, like it's sort of got a ten inch hook link there. That's fairly standard. Yeah. To what I've been using. So you can fish it long over over sort of a dirty bottom if you want, mm -hmm. or if you want to fish it over a clean bottom, you can fish it short. It doesn't tangle. Um, resets itself well. And it's just everything you sort yeah. of want in a hook link, really. And it's, it's like you say, it's got that sort of just enough stiffness to kick the hook bait away from that's the lake, a bit like yeah. a coated braid, isn't it? Yeah. So um, that's the hook link covered. What about the hook? What sort of hook do you use with this rig? And also, what sort of hook bait? You know, I see, I see you've got a, a balanced wafter on there, but tell us a little bit about that end of it. Look, okay, mate, yeah, basically, uh, I started off with sort of most of the hooks in the range and just tied a knotless knot in all of them and right. uh, run them across my hand and just see which one was sort of turning the quickest and turning the best and this uh, this long shank pattern was sort of streets ahead of, of all the others for, for sort of a turn and grab and a flip okay. effect uh, so I settled on that one um, primarily in a size 9 for two reasons. Number one, they just were really, really sharp. It's the yeah. sharpest ones that I've found. I actually don't even sharpen those ones. I cast them pretty much straight out of the mm -hmm. packet. Um, and also because the, the carp that I'm fishing for at the moment is, is notorious for liking a small bait. Right. Um, okay. it's, it's been caught on, on, on 10 millers and bits of plastic yeah. like a few times. So I've uh, wanted, wanted a hook that I could get away with using a, a small bait. And so a size 9 long shank's been been the hook of choice really. And with that long shank it obviously makes it relatively difficult to eject doesn't yeah. it compared to say a short shank pattern. Um, but with that size 9, for a long shank hook it's quite small I suppose isn't it? Um, but that, how does that sit? So you've got the, you've got the hook bait there, how, how does that you know look on the lake bed when, yeah. when you're fishing it, it? It is quite a small hook but the, the thing with it I like about the ESP long shanks is even though they are like you say, quite a small hook. Mm. The gape's quite wide. Yeah. Uh, other long shank hooks on the market, I've seen the gape's really, really narrow, mm. um, and you don't really feel like they're going to catch us hold as well as these. Yeah. But that that basically, as it is, um, will sit. The the hook the hook bait you can see um, is a, is a ten mil barrel. Yeah. Um, which is a glugged 
wafter, so it's like a heavy wafter. So it's and got a degree of buoyancy. It's got a degree it. of buoyancy, and then to just sort of counteract the the weight of the of, of the oil that's in it, of the glug, yeah. you can see I've just got a small piece, the smallest size piece of, of ESP buoyant coil yeah. on there, and then basically what happens is is that will just sit. So the hook's still lying flat on the lies bottom. Flat on the bottom, and then the hook plate's just sat. And up. it just sits up, bolt upright, almost yeah. like a pop up. Yeah. So that's just going to fly back and uh, that's it. nail them every time. And I've also noticed you've got a little bit of um, silicon tube over the eye. What, why is that? Why, why do you use that? Well, basically, because of the degree, the angle of the interned eye, mm -hmm. and because the synchro obviously is in the 18 pounds quite stiff, mm. as it comes through with the knotless knot, it, it just shuts the gape down almost completely. It almost sort of kicks yeah. off at, at right angle. So the idea, that's a piece of uh, 0.75 silicon, mm -hmm. uh, just five, six, seven mil of that. And it just covers the covers the knot um, and opens the opens yeah. the gate back back right. up, you know, yeah. so it's yeah. not interfered with at all. And how do you attach the um, the hook bait to the to the shank of the hook? So you've got a little swivel on there, haven't you? Yeah, there's a there's a micro hook ring swivel on there, um, and then a, and then a shank stop, the bigger size of the two shank stops, right. ESP shank stops, and that's set opposite the point of the hook. Yeah. So the way that it, it basically works is the, the the hook ring swivel would be like a hair. So yeah, that's where yeah. I sort of have the hair exit if I was fishing, you know, like a standard mm -hmm. a braided rig, sort of just opposite the point between the point and the bend of the hook. Okay. Um, and then it's just tied on with uh, with super floss. Yeah. So that so basically it's just free running on the shank of the yeah. A bit like a blowback. It's a blowback rig. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Right. Okay. So generally fish it about 10 inches long, is that sort of the optimum length, do you think? Yeah, standard, that's, that's, that's a starting point for me. Yeah. And that, that length, sort of, unless I'm fishing sort of, I wouldn't fish it in heavy weed, but unless yeah. the bottom's like particularly sort of dirty, mm. um, that, will, that will sit well over a clean bottom, okay. and that will sit well sort of over, over a dirty bottom as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And what sort of baiting arrangement are you using when you're using this rig? Is it Use, generally using boilies, I guess. Yeah, generally chops. Um, like I say, I use this rig, rig in the edge quite a bit, or close to the edge, mm. sort of a few yards out, and I'm generally throwing handfuls of crushed chops out. Yeah. I've fished, I fished it over pellet, um, fished it over corn, obviously, as well. So it's fishing yeah. for a bite, really. Yeah, so it, work, it works equally well over yeah. And I notice you're not using any, any sort of tungsten putty on that. Is, no. is there a reason for that? Well, yeah, I mean, it's... To be fair, and again, especially using the 18 pound, mm -hmm. it, it, it just sinks so well, this stuff. Yeah. And it's like I said, it's, 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 I feel it's the closest to using a fluorocarbon mm. without actually using one. It's like, yeah. a, it's like a really tough version of a, of a, of yeah, a fluorocarbon. It's, it's a, it is a very tough line. Very, very tough, very abrasion resistant. Um, and it's just, this sort of negates the need for, for any putty, really. Yeah. And how have you connected that to the swivel, the top end of the hook link? Again, just a figure of eight loop knot. Nice and simple, um, through the through the big eye swivel, yeah, and onto a helicopter rig. So it gives it a good degree of flexibility, and it's yeah. never going to tangle, is it? it doesn't like tangle, yeah. and obviously resets with the stiffness. It, if it does, if you know the event, if you do get an aborted mm. take, it will it will reset itself, itself mm. pretty well, yeah. So do you all sort of always use a helicopter rig, or or do you use a lead clip, or? Yeah, I mean, t to be fair, I've actually used this with all of the three lead arrangements that I use. I've used right. it with helicopter rigs. I've used it with drop-off inlines, right. um, and okay. I've used it with more recently more with lead clips uh, if I've been fishing in the edge like I said where I've been looking for the fish is sort of there's Norfolk reeds that are sort of eight foot high and yeah. it's deep enough for them to get in so helicopter rigs are sort of more out in yeah. the middle of the pond and then the yeah. lead clips are generally in the edge more so, getting the lead off on the take so it's really really versatile really yeah yeah, it? yeah you can work with off of anything so that's the rig pretty much covered Dave um, I know you've been using it a lot this year tell us a little bit about what you've caught on it yeah, like you say, I've been uh, sort of using it since the spring. Um, I've had mirrors to 33.4, and I've had commons to just over 30 pounds. Brilliant. Um, it's served me really well so far. I've been catching them out of areas of the lake that I can't normally catch them from. Right. And I've, the hook holes have been phenomenal, to be fair. Um, for a bottom bait rig, you know, they, they, the hook holes look more like the sort of hook holes you get with a chod rig or a hinge really? stiffling. They're, they're at least an inch back all the time. You know, the whole hook's almost buried. Um, and I think a combination of the, the buoyancy of the hook bait, um, the stiffness of the 18 pound synchro, yeah. and the fact that it just turns and flips so early and so quickly, just just makes for brilliant, brilliant hook holes. So, it, so it's basically the buoyancy of the hook bait is making it fly back when they suck it in, yeah. and then when they when they try to eject it, the hook's turning really quickly and just pinning them quite yeah. a long way back in the mouth. So you're getting a brilliant, That's brilliant right. hold. Yeah.
So that's the Synchro XT bottom bait rig. It's a little bit different and could be a definite edge on pressurised waters.